welcome everybody to our, our RUG meeting. Our, uh, now, um, today we have two speakers. Um, our first speaker is Beatriz Romero. Uh, she's going to be uh, introducing us to GIS. <laughs> Is this good? Okay. Hi everyone, I'm Beatrice Romero and I'm going to be introducing you guys to uh, GIS. Um, so this is the outline of my slide. Uh, okay, so uh, first of all, for those of you aren't, who aren't familiar with GIS, uh, it's a geographical information system um, that is used to store, view, and analyze uh, geographical information. Um, what I like about GIS is that it provides an alternative approach to analyzing geographical data, you know, approach to it. So um, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to use GIS, and the type of software that I am familiar with is QGIS, but there's also uh, many different types of uh, GIS software. So, um, so uh, two main, um, two important types of data in uh, GIS is vector and raster. Your vector data is a model that represents uh, data as points, lines, and areas. So basically, uh, your x and y coordinates on uh, a map will be represented as a point um, on in GIS. Now, your raster data model, uh, it's more for continuous data, such as uh, aerial photographs or satellite images. And um, because of this, the data is represented as a grid of pixels, where each pixel um, is assigned a value to the appropriate data. One of the most important things in GIS is, is, the, is that it's layer-based. Um, and the layers play an important part in this system because um, not only can you turn them off, so you'll be able to see how each of them can interact with each other, uh, they, they provide depth to your, your map images. Um, this is something that I did in GIS. It's a, I actually imported data from a tutorial um, and I was able to produce this map where I was I converted each of like the regions into percentages and, and it shows uh, this is actually data that's um, public domain so you know I was able to make this map with uh, the percentages by region of uh, percentages of males who have been tested for HIV this is and next I'm going to show you a tor short tutorial on QGIS so I'm going to actually go to YouTube or I have uploaded, my, but you're going to want to make sure you open the desktop 2.4. That's the version you're going to be working with. Um, so <clears throat> they have different uh, toolbars. The toolbars are the same as any other software. Um, so I'm just going to be creating a basic uh, vector map. So I'm going to want to click on the vector layer, which looks like points and lines. Um, you're going to want to browse to your desktop and make sure that you locate the, your GIS data and vector data um, is in the form of shape files on QGIS. So you're going to want to open the shape file. And uh, once you open it, uh, it'll show in the layer, in the layer window. And um, this actually, th there's a toggle function for turning um, layers on and off. There's also another way you can add layers is if you go to the top. I don't know if you all saw that. Um, and you can add vector layers that way and raster data. So, and your vector data is in the form of uh, discontinuous data, like your roads, your lakes. Um, and right now, um, I'm going to be compiling a vector map of Hidalgo County. It's important to, um, I'm also, later on in the video, I'm going to show you how important like layers are because if, you know, you have layers that aren't um, situated properly, sometimes the layers will block out information. So you want to make sure that when you're creating a GIS map, the layers are um, situated on top of each other to where they don't block information. So it's, right now I just added the roads. And as you can see, the roads have blocked out the rivers and the places and you, where you can't see them. So I'm going to toggle the roads off. And as you can see, you know, the, you can see the points now. So I'm going to uh, bring the roads down. And uh, you can kind of see the points a little better. And as you can see, if I bring the boundary up, 
it's going to get rid of all the information. So again, like layers are important um, in how you and how they operate in GIS. So, uh, this is actually that same map, only I have uh, just uh, redid some of the features. The black points are, you know, Edinburgh, McAllen, Harlingen, and Brownsville. And I changed the colors of roads. And this is just another thing that you can do when using GIS. And this is, uh, last time I'm just going to conclude with things that people have done using GIS. So uh, back in 2010, there was an earthquake that uh, struck Haiti. It was big, 7.0 magnitude. It killed thousands of people, and it, effect and it affected millions. Um, rescuers were able to utilize GIS in their aid efforts. Um, some of these, uh, some of the some of what they did was that they were able to provide quick identification for um, potential housing um, in, in affected populations. Uh, they were able to analyze uh, areas where refugee, refugees could camp out, and it would provide, uh, and they were able to locate areas that were easy, accessible to supply food, water, and other resources. Um, they were able to locate damages, areas where damage was extreme, and um, as of 2013, uh, more than half of the debris from Haiti has, you know, been collected. Um, this next one is an elevation map, and it's per personally my favorite um, because it provides. Uh, I have never seen a data set in this type of um, image. Um, this was from Doug McCoon. He got his data set from San Francisco Crime Data. And it's a three. This is three D map of crime, uh, and I and I chose this one because I believe it really showcases the power um, in the ability to visualize a data set. Um, this is also the second one. Um, I haven't. I have not been able to produce a map like this on GIS yet, but I would like to be able to do that for uh, the RGB. <clears throat> So, and then my last slide is uh, population statistics for the U.S. And this is a sample attribute uh, table in QGIS um, where it gives you like area, population, your name. Um, and this is an example of the map in GIS. And I just, I chose this because uh, once again, I think GIS is a powerful tool for data analysis. And I like that it's different than your traditional map or globe and it's interactive and it merges uh, your image with your data in one nice place. So uh, this is resources if you would like to know more. Uh, no GIS uh, is, has great tutorials that are easy to understand for uh, anyone who's a beginner at this. Okay, okay. So thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Yes, it's a free software. dot org, qgis. dot org. So. Oh yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, sir. Into QGIS, yes, you can embed. You would embed it by um, linking. First, you would upload your data set, um, and then you would open the file, and you would link it to. Um, there's a property table when you. I wish I had GIS. When you right click on. Um, So um, right on the layer tab right there where the X is, um, you would actually right click and you would go to the property table. Um, and I don't have GIS on here, but it would bring up a property table. Um, and then you would go to uh, a tab, I believe it's uh, the style. <laughs> I should have brought it. <laughs> and then you would have had to like change the regions and that's where you actually you can link um, data, you can change attributes, you can classify your data, I mean, there's a lot of features in it. Another question. Uh, where can one find a reliable uh, calendar map? Uh, can you use it or is it available online? 
Um, it's actually available online. Um, you can Google uh, Texas A&M Hidalgo County GIS data, and it'll link you to the college website. If you if you go to No GIS, they do have a lot of uh, open source uh, data sets where you can find um, any sorts of data. Uh, no GIS.com. GIS.com. Thank you guys. Thank you for being so patient. 